Hello and thank you for checking out the Six Sigma Toolbox. Uh, today we're going to take uh, probably under 10 minutes to talk about a cause and effect matrix. It's also called a XY matrix if you speak mathematician, um, or some folks call it a CE matrix, just short for cause and effect. All means the same thing. Uh, it's really a uh, tool for prioritizing and uh, assigning some numeric value to various inputs. So we'll jump right in and get started. So as always, uh, what and why? Uh, what is it? It's a, it's a tool that's used for prioritizing, uh, especially when you're faced with multiple root causes that need to be addressed. Uh, it's a simple, very simple way to assign a numeric value to complex thoughts and then prioritizing them in a meaningful way. Uh, often it's the, the next step after uh, using an Ishikawa diagram or a fishbone diagram, especially if that's uh, an instance where it yielded lots and lots of different root causes to a specific problem. And it's a, a great tool to use when uh, you don't know which aspect of your project you need to kind of tackle next. So a cause and effect matrix, XY matrix. Um, the XY naming convention comes from uh, this uh, mathematical expression right here, that Y equals FX. Um, it, that really just means that output is some function of input. Um, and said another way, that is really just what you get out of something, depends on what you put into it. Um, and so when we use a, an Ishikawa diagram, we're examining some effect or some output, um, some result uh, at the head of the fish. And that in, in math terms would be called the Y. It's kind of the, the answer to the math problem. It's the, the sum. Uh, the bones that we put on the fish are all inputs or causes that have some impact on the output. So uh, those would be the, the X's, if we were speaking of this as a, uh, in kind of an uh, algebra type. So real, real quick, the fishbone you probably are familiar with. Um, we have at the head of the fish the, the big Y, the, the answer to the equation. Um, all the little bones sticking out in these categories are going to be the X's that sort of contribute to that answer when you add them all together. Um, so just a real quick one minute kind of review of a fishbone. We'll pretend we're uh, working at a, a sales, uh, some type of business where uh, sales are low at the moment. And so our project is to kind of determine the root cause of why we have uh, low sales. Uh, we get subject matter experts in a room. We're working on a fishbone and we get lots and lots of ideas up here. And they range everywhere from needing some type of sales bonus structure uh, listed under metrics um, all the way to uh, machines not having a, um, so any method for customers to order online. Uh, we talk about outdated brochures, you know, tons, tons of things that contribute to why we have low sales right now. So this is the actual matrix, an XY matrix or a CE matrix, cause and effect matrix. They all mean the same thing. Um, really all you're going to do now is list out all of those inputs, all the things, all the bones from that fish, all the things that contribute to that effect of having low sales. Uh, and the categories don't matter. Um, you're just listing them out in any particular order, each of those uh, items. And so we'll walk through the sales bonus structure uh, example. Once you have it listed here, what you want to do is look at what is the impact of this item? How much impact does it have on that end result? How much does it impact having low sales? Um, and you want to score it using a 1, a 3, or a 9. Uh, 1 being it has you know low impact, 3 meaning it has some type of medium impact, and 9 meaning it has very high impact. Um, and the, the way you score this is, is kind of important. It's, it's good to use this 1, 3, or 9 because it's much easier, particularly if you're in a group, um, it's much easier to sort of get consensus from the group and, and just sort of categorize, you know, kind of broadly as being either low, medium, or high impact. If you use a, a 1 through 10 scoring uh, system, you'll, you'll spend all day in there with two people arguing over whether something is a, a 4 or a 6. And uh, it, it really doesn't matter. We, we, we want to just think in broad terms. It's high, medium, or low. And most folks will quickly, you know, agree. Um, the, those two people arguing over whether it's a four or a six could probably agree that on this scale, um, it's probably medium impact. Uh, so next thing you want to do is think about the implementation score. And we're going to use a, a similar uh, scoring methodology. It's one, three, or nine. 
Um, just in terms of if it's very difficult to implement, that's going to be a one. Something with a medium-sized implementation is a three, and something that's easy uh, is a nine. And you know, there's no hard, fast rules for um, for really uh, assigning this. This you you know it when you see it. Um, difficult is going to be things where uh, there are, you're likely going to meet resistance. Um, you're going to have to talk someone into something. You're going to have to get approval to spend money. Um, you know, it's going to be an uphill battle. You know, that's kind of in, in a broad sense what's going to be difficult. Uh, a medium is something that, yeah, it can be done. It's going to require a little bit of work. Um, you probably need a couple, maybe a follow-up meeting or two and have to gather some data. It's, it's definitely doable. We need, to, we need to assign a resource to it, but it's something that can be done. Easy implement, implementation are the things that, um, you know, the decision makers in the room right now and yes, I can I can do it right now from my laptop or as soon as I get back to my desk and there's going to be zero resistance to this. I can implement it immediately. So that's kind of a, a general scale you want to use. So we did, we're going to talk about the sales bonus structure. We decided that it was a medium impact and uh, the group decided that uh, as far as implementation, it was a nine. It was very easy to do. Uh, maybe the owner of the company is in the room. He's a part of it and he's been considering that anyway. He actually has a something thought out, all he needs to do is implement it. Um, what you want to do is for each of these items you're going to assign the impact score and, and the implementation score and then you're going to multiply those numbers. And so for the sales bonus structure as an example we get a total score of uh, 27. So you would do that for each of these items that we listed off from the fishbone but ultimately what you're really going to look for and zero in on is anything that's an 81. Um, if it's an 81 that means the group decided that it had very high impact and the group decided that it was actually very easy to implement. Um, so you want to focus on these first as your main priority that you're going to take immediate action on. It's easy to do and it has big impact. These things tend to be the type of items that you're a little embarrassed about. That it's like, why weren't we doing this in the first place? Um, and that's fine. That's normal and natural. You know, you're taking the steps now to correct it. Um, so it, those are those are good finds and they have big impact and they're easy to do. So th that's really where you want to start. And if if you're only able to do a handful, those are the handful you should do. However, it's important also not to ignore sort of separately anything that did have a nine uh, in terms of uh, its implementation that it's very easy to implement, even if it's low impact, um, and anything that had a nine on uh, impact. Yeah, those should also be considered. It's not what you're going to jump on today, um, but honestly, you know, a lot of these maybe are, are quick wins that can just be done as a sort of secondary measure. Um, and anything that was nine, that was you know big impact, but very difficult to implement, some thought needs to be given to that because um, maybe that's a possible separate long-term project that has a more refined scope. Uh, like in this case, um, you know, dealing with why we have an outdated lead list. Um, you know, maybe that is something that's very difficult to get uh, updated. But if it has that big of an impact, it's probably worth looking into uh, for the long term. But in the meantime, we're going to jump on these immediate action items. The fact that there's no online ordering options and that the sales staff is not trained uh, well enough. Big impact, easy to get done. Let's do those first. You can uh, kind of do this uh, on the fly. Um, I've seen a lot of folks do that. If you're up there and the, the group is inspired when you're working on the fishbone and you've uh, got a good list there, you can just you know write on the board, uh, have somebody with a calculator nearby and, and kind of establish what those scores are and do it right there on the fly. Um, nothing wrong with that. Um, it gets a little messy because you want to keep track of anything. Um, you want to keep track of the impact score and the uh, implementation score separately so you can identify those quick wins. But nothing wrong with doing this. So summary, it's here to help you prioritize. Um, generally, you're going to move on the highest overall scores first, those 81s and, and numbers close to that. Um, those should really be the priority. Um, anything that was rated high in terms of impact but difficult on an implementation should probably be considered separately for a, a long-term project. Because um, that, and especially if this is, looks like a root cause, um, some consideration should be given into deeper discussion about just how difficult that is and just how impactful it is. Um, and then all the items rated easy on implementation 
you know, those are your quick wins that, you know, probably somebody should do before the session's over. Um, likely these are things that we, we've known are a good idea. We just haven't found the time and gotten around to doing it. And of course, you want to revisit this list if you find that some of those initial assumptions about impact or implementation um, maybe were wrong sized. Uh, once you leave the workshop, you get back to real life and, and get some uh, opinions from folks that are closer to it. Um, always, you know, don't be afraid to go back and, and sort of rescope and resize this. Um, typically, uh, that's not the case. I don't see very often where folks have to go back and change that. So, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, check out some of our other videos, and uh, thanks a lot.